everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. Hi, I'm Michael Freeman. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, if you'd like to find us, uh, you can find us in our face Facebook group, uh, facebook.com slash user uh, slash groups slash curve anarchy. And we also have a Facebook page, and I'll put a link up for that in the group. And um, you can find us at our YouTube uh, during the live show. Um, and that would be youtube.com slash user slash curve anarchy. And then uh, we post that to Voluntary Virtues. So uh, find that on Wednesdays. And uh, Michael, would you like to say anything else? Or we can introduce <laughs> our guests. Well, yeah. Um, you know, thanks for having me back, of course. And, and good to see you, as always. Um, so we're doing the roundtable tonight, right? We have 35 guests lined up. And, uh, <laughs> this, is, this might be ugly, but let's run it, man. Yeah. Uh, so, Derek Rose is number one. Yeah. Uh, would you like to say hi, Derek? Hey, how are you doing? My name is Derek Rose. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, plug your, uh, plug your material. Yeah, tell us about yourself a little bit. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm an activist independent journalist, freelance journalist from Houston, Texas. I write for BenSwan.com, for Tony Styles, for the Anti-Media, for the Liberty Beat, um, and a mag some magazines in Houston, and also run the Conscious Resistance Network, which is uh, a place where there's content that is about spirituality, consciousness, anarchy, politics, and you know the intersection of all those ideas. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of what I do. Can, can we get a... Uh... Can we get like a 10 second synopsis of your upcoming book? Okay, yeah, the book that's coming out probably sometime early next year is called The Conscious Resistance Reflections on Anarchy and Spirituality. It's being written by me and John Vibes, and it's going to explore further those ideas of uh, Buddhism, shamanism, the Tao, uh, even Christianity, Judaism. We're going to look at various teachings like that and anarchy and see where they come together and, and I really hope to start a conversation on getting those type of ideas further into uh, the voluntarist thought. Sounds good. Um, yeah, we have uh, Nikki Liberty Doll. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, I was at the end, like the bottom of the list, so I thought I was going to be last. Hi. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki, you're the most second famous person. Well, Marcel's up there, too. I don't think I'm <laughs> It, it makes me feel really awkward when people say I'm famous. I don't uh, I think, think I'm famous. <laughs> I, th I think it's because of the things that hang off your chest, but... Oh. Don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Booby jokes. Another edit. <laughs> I think that's fine. I think we can leave it. <laughs> me too. So, uh, introduce yourself. What do you have going for you? Okay, uh, well, I'm Nikki. Um, I run the Facebook page for Liberty Doll. I have a blog at thelibertydoll.com. I have a YouTube channel that's mostly empty right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm also writing a book, but I can't say when it's going to be published because it's not finished yet. Um, and I'm also a private practice mental health therapist. So, all that. <laughs> Uh, Marcel Edward Fontaine, as you go by. Uh, um, go ahead. I'm, I'm Marcel Fontaine. Um, I'm an activist from Norwalk, Connecticut. And uh, mom, I run a Facebook page called L LGBT for Gun Rights. Mom, you, can, you can find that <coughs> by just searching you know, facebook.com slash mom, LGBT for Gun Rights. It's just right, right there. Like, um, my, you could also like you know ch follow my Facebook page if you want and mom and yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, uh, why, why are you uh, why are you notable, Marcel? Like, what should we what should we know about you? Uh, um. Well, I uh, I'm a uh, mom, mom, I'm an I'm a gay anarcho anarcho capitalist mom, or a uh, free market anarchist, and I uh, mom. And I like you know, uh, and I spoke at Liberty Fest um, down in New York City, and and I got interviewed by Vice. So yeah. <laughs> so you're making the big bucks, okay? 
That's all I could say. <laughs> uh, Kika is back. Uh, it's been about a month or two. Hi, how's it going, Kika Houston? I thought you guys forgot me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to intro yourself or just look at the screen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, remind me on Friday to send you, like, five bucks of Bitcoin for that, okay? Oh, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, my name's Kika. I just have opinions and shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> popular affiliation or anything. I just like smoke. <laughs> so, that's nice. Burst in bubbles. <laughs> that's always fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, John Moss, welcome back. What's up, guys? Okay. Uh, intro yourself, man. What you got? Uh, not much. Just a uh, kind of newcomer in the Liberty movement. Uh, I admin a page. I admin on the uh, New Sons and Daughters of Liberty, uh, which was started by um, myself. Well, Freeman started it. I kind of took it over. And uh, that's it. It's you know, it, it's a fun page. That's all I do. I'm not out to change the world. I just want to laugh and have some fun. <laughs> that's it. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, uh, Corey, I uh, haven't seen you in a long time. How are you doing? Yeah, it's been a while, man. Hi, um, my name is Corey, and, uh, well, um, I'm a uh, libertarian slash anarcho-capitalist. I'm kind of in between on that, personally. Um, I'm a, I run the page on Facebook, uh, Ancom Logic. <laughs> I have a Facebook channel, although there's really not much going for it right now. It's a, uh, I mean, not well, Facebook, a uh, YouTube channel. Scratch four four one six is the YouTube name, and all I've really got on there right now is a meeting with Congressman Justin Amash, and when <laughs> I got an eighty dollar ticket from the Calhoun County Sheriff's Department for walking down the street while wearing dark clothing. Wow. <laughs> what were you thinking? Um, I have no idea. Apparently, I was breaking into cars and stealing stereos. <laughs> but they didn't, wow. uh, they didn't me for that. Um, they cited me simply for walking down the street. Oh, well. They didn't find any stereos on me. I mean... <laughs> I guess my pockets weren't big enough. I must have threw the stereos in the bushes or something. Yeah. Well, you're a suspicious character. <laughs> I, suspicious I, I, just call that, I call that typical government shenanigans. So. Yeah, apparently now suspicious behavior or just looking suspicious warrants an $80 ticket now. But I fought it in court. <laughs> like uh, last week, I, I went to go get a six-pack at the liquor store like right down the street. It's... 70 yards away or so. I forgot my wallet, and, and when I got there, I turned around and came back home. And I noticed this cop at the top of my street just staring me down. So uh, I grabbed my wallet and go back to the store. And, and Well, long story short, he stopped me and told me that it was suspicious that I was walking. You know, This is, uh, this is just the narrative at this point, I think. Wow. Yeah. No, and it was actually wow. fun. I, I told him off and, and laughed and had a had a great conversation about it. But you yeah, know, the guy, the guy to, to to put put it bluntly, this this person threatened me with murder for walking in my neighborhood. So what they did with me when they stopped me, um, first I I didn't know who it was. All I knew, a car pulled up behind me with bright lights shining into my face. I couldn't tell who it was. It was that night and lights on my face. And they told me to stop, and I'm like, why why stop? Who are you? Exactly. Uh, they didn't answer me. They're like, they're like, just stop and come out in the street. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Who the fuck are you? I, I agree. You know, the police I, department. And I'm, oh, you're the police department. I'm like, well, why am I, why are you stopping? Well, you're walking down the street at night. You're wearing dark, all dark clothes. I'm like, oh, so you're stopping me for walking while wearing black, right? Just because these people, you know say that they are the police, um, I can't say for any other states. I could probably say for Texas, but I know that for Rhode Island, if you request it, a, a government official, specifically one with a gun, is legally obligated to provide you with three different forms of identification. And just because somebody says, hey, I'm the cops and I have some guns, uh, 
I, I, I personally require a little more validation than that. Wait, that's that's not how they identify themselves? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, like this. So, what, yeah, what happened yeah. after that, though, is so, so I walked out in the street so I could get out of the lights so I could actually see them, you know? Sure. And the cop walks up to me. First thing he did, he didn't even, well, <laughs> he, said, he said, so what are you doing out here tonight? And immediately reached out and started grabbing my pockets to search me. Yeah. I took a step back, and I'm like, whoa, man, don't touch me. He's wow. like, well, do you have any weapons on you? I'm like, hold up, before we go anymore, I'm going to start filming this. That's where I pulled out my camera, started filming, and you that's when the video starts. And after after I pulled out the camera, he completely dropped the narrative about stopping me for walking while wearing dark clothing. <laughs> and he changed it to walking in the street where a sidewalk is provided. Of course. I'm sure he had all kinds of legal scribble and that's definitions to, to make that up. But. Guys, we got to uh, get this going a little uh, we got a few topics here. Sorry to cut in, but um, uh, <clears throat> firstly we got uh, Black Friday. We're gonna we got a lot of people here, so we got to keep the conversation moving. Um, so uh, Black Friday, um, it's basically consumerism. It's uh, worshiping um, the corporations, in my opinion. Um, again, uh, in my opinion, capitalism is a good thing, but uh, consumerism to this degree is probably ridiculous. Because you're stomping on people uh, to and killing them in order to get a product like a, a video game or something, um, or at least that's the that's the extreme side of it. But um, consumerism in general is just ridiculous. Um, that's my take on it, and um, I guess we'll go down the line. Um, I heard that John should be going first on this one. So, uh, John, what do you have to say about this? What happened? Oh, it was just funny. The other day I made a post on New Sons and Daughters of Liberty, and I, I took some shit for it. Uh, I, all I posted was like, you know, come on, be honest. Who, who was out there camping out last night for some, for some, you know, piece of garbage that a store has or something like that? And, and immediately I got labeled as, as being anti-capitalist and, and alienating ANCAPs and all this other stuff. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I never said there shouldn't be a Black Friday. I just said I'd rather be warm in my bed at 3 in the morning rather than camped out at Walmart for $10 off a toaster. That's like, here, here. I no part of it. That's all. I think it's ridiculous. I didn't say there shouldn't be one. Yeah, right. Wants to take this, uh, Kika. What do you say? Well, I've kind of been accused for the same kind of crap. I got, I got labeled as a uh, an Amcom the other day because I have <laughs> I have specific opinions related to balance um, <laughs> in in a lot of facets of life that I believe are very relevant. And and I pointed out uh, that to certain degrees capitalism can go to ridiculous extents, kind of like you know Black Friday consumerism. And uh, that seemed to be justification enough from this other person's opinion that I, you know, I don't really care about Black Friday so much. Uh, and I kind of grew up with the, the, the idea that you should use a product or you should use a product to have a good chance. Kika, we're having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, your microphone's been so bad. Fuck. <laughs> My bad. Basically, I don't buy a Black Friday, but when consumers are going to start wiring, you start. I'm sorry. We we got to toss this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marcel, uh, Marcel, what do you say? Um, I mean, like, um, I don't really like, you know, like, blind consumerism and stuff like that, but, like, you know, um, but, yeah, like, um, it, it, it's just like it's just with me on Black Friday I mean like I mean, at, at least on that day like people are like you know choosing the uh, market rather than politicians which is which is a really good thing but like it's just uh, um, it's just it, it, it's just blind consumerism and I don't necessarily support it <laughs> yeah. uh, Nikki? Well, I think the whole Black Friday thing, like, consumerism is just people trying to fill a void with stuff. There is something about their lives that is completely unhappy, so they have to rush out to Best Buy or Walmart or wherever it is to go get 
stuff to try and fill a void that's never going to get filled. But the funniest thing is places like Walmart specifically, at least, all these sales that they're having aren't even actually sales. They're just specific cheap items that they don't normally sell to, like, drag people in. Um, I guess if you really want to participate in the economy and still participate in Black Friday, you can just, I don't know, like, find a crackhead and pay him 20 bucks to stand in line. For you. <laughs> uh, Derek, what do you say? Um, yeah, you know, I, I guess I approach this from the the angle that um, somebody was saying earlier about balance that really just this is this seems to be one way that the the family the community is under attack where more and more people are encouraged to go out on I mean I don't really obviously I don't celebrate Thanksgiving in the traditional sense but as far as having time with family more and more people are going shopping now on Thanksgiving there was people in my family this year who were not there for family things because they were out shopping instead and I think things like that, when it's when these this consumerism gets in the way of people uh, actually having real relationships with family members or friends or people close to them, instead are willing to go out and camp for you know deals from something that's probably put together from cheap labor from some other country where somebody else is being oppressed and exploited. Um, you know, it's just I don't see anything positive about it really in general. And and I think if people are going to go out and Try to shop during this period, this time period for the holidays or however you want to uh, call it. I think that money uh, could, in that time, that energy could be better spent into our local community so we could support people who are individual entrepreneurs, not these giant corporations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Corey. Yeah, um, I I have to agree with the um about the consumerism. It, it's just out of control in this country. The consumerism is, and I think the the consumerism is a it's a symptom of the corporatism or fascism that this country is revolving around right now. They just uh, these you know, multi-billion-dollar mega corporations. They just put out these these ad campaigns that you know everybody has to get out on Black Friday. You have to get the best deals, and and everybody buys it. You know, hook, line, and sinker. And uh, like Liberty Doll just said, it's they're not even giving you good deals. A lot of times what they do is like a week or so before Black Friday, they will mark their prices up on some of their <laughs> electronics and stuff. Then when Black Friday comes around, they mark it back down to regular price and put a tag on there saying it's on sale, and everybody buys it. Yep. And in my family, we don't go. We never have, never will go shopping on Black Friday. What we do. For Christmas presents, we buy presents throughout the year. Whenever you know we see something that you know, say my brother wanted, uh, you know, a new hunting jacket or something, and we just happen to be at the store and we see, oh, hey, that's a nice hunting jacket, and it's on sale, fifteen percent off. You know, it might be August or something. Buy it for him, you know, and just save it. Yeah. Me personally, um, when this Black Friday thing started. There's a couple video games that I wanted to get and a new Xbox controller. And this Black Friday thing started on Thursday around here. Like somebody else said that a minute ago that's been doing that. What I did when I was uh, going out to my mom's house for Thanksgiving before I got in the car on the way there, I just pulled out my smartphone, get on the um, website, bought a couple games on there, and ordered an Xbox controller off of Newegg.com. Boom, shopping done. Yeah. Go out to Thanksgiving and have fun with the family. You know, There's... Michael, what do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's got to disagree with everybody else, so I guess I'll take the I'll take the role on that. <laughs> well, first, um, when Corey says that it's bad or evil or filthy capitalism or something in order to um, raise the prices in the biz in in whatever uh, service you provide, idea, products, whatever. You know, whatever company is going to raise their prices the day before Black Friday or the week before, whatever it is. I actually have no problem with that whatsoever. If you're willing to buy this stuff, then they're probably smart to do that. Um, 
I actually love consumerism. I'm a wicked consumer. You guys have been watching me consume beer this whole time. And, and you guys are all fucking consumers too. Look at your laptops and your smartphones and all this stuff that you're on right now. You know, I think <laughs> I like stuff. You guys like stuff too. I can see your houses behind your silhouettes in these pictures. If you want to go shop and, and camp on the cements in a tent or whatever it is and hang out outside of Kmart for three days, you're not hurting me in any way, shape, or form. So I have absolutely no problem with that. It's true. Boom. That's where I, that's what I got. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> well, can I counter because you were you were kind of attacking me there a little bit. Can I counter that? A little bit. All right. Well, I don't, I don't have a problem with the consumer as a what the issue is with what I said was that it's the way that they do that by raising their prices a week before and then dropping them and calling them a sale. Sure, it's sure. Deceptive. They're being. Well, deceptive. it's not fraudulent though. It's not. No, it's not fraudulent, but it is deceptive, and people buy it. I'm more criticizing the people who buy it, you know, because yeah. they're fucking stupid to buy that. It, 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 I, totally, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I'm not saying they're stupid to purchase the products. I'm saying they're stupid to believe what they're being told that it's a sale. You know? Sure, great. Do your research. If you want to buy good stuff, do your dot your T's and I's, man. Yeah, and if you don't want to do your research and you just want to walk into a store and there's a yellow tag, so it must be <laughs> feel, well, good. Do it. You if know? you don't, if you don't vote, you can't complain. Wow, <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah. All right, I gotta cut it off. Um, we uh we we're uh, gonna lose Derek in about two three minutes or something. So we gotta jump over to uh Ferguson and that whole debacle down in Missouri and. Let's um, let's just lay let's just uh let's let Derek take the horn on this one until exactly, he has to leave. Exactly. Yeah. Go yeah, for all it. All right. All right, um, so I'm not sure exactly which angle you guys want to take, but I'll just, you know, uh, tell everybody a little bit of my experience. Derek, man, we just you, we just want what we want, we, want the truth. Fact, we want factoids, man. We don't want opinions. We just want what you saw, you know. All right, well, so I was in Ferguson two weeks after Mike Brown was killed uh, in August. The shooting was on August 9th. I was there a couple weeks after that for about a week, and... I was there reporting for BenSwan.com and interviewed supporters of Darren Wilson, people who lived on the street where Mike Brown was killed, um, talked to all sides and talked to went to the press conferences, tried to question the police about some of the various things that were getting reported and misrepresented in the media and trying to clear up some of those things. And I wrote an article that is on BenSwan.com called Reflecting on Ferguson. Missouri, uh, that goes into deeper, but basically I just think that since then, you know, now we've come to the point where the grand jury decided not to indict Officer Darren Wilson, and this is creating a larger conversation that is going into, of course, whether there's perceived uh, racism and how that plays into this whole situation, and then others who believe the bigger picture is just focusing on the militarization of the police force. I think that these are these are all important conversations that need to happen. Um, I was here in Houston whenever there, you know, 500 or so people sh tried to shut down a couple of streets and some freeways, and seeing people shut down, uh, you know, Thanksgiving Day parades in New York and bridges and various cities around the country. And I think basically what we're seeing is that people, regardless of what you may think about the specifics of the Mike Brown situation and the 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 uh, decision there. It's obvious that people are growing tired of violence from the police force, and I think that the the positive thing that we can get out of that is to try to be a part of that, to shape that conversation, and to uh, mold that into something that can be positive, that can be solution based, and can get beyond just this sort of animalistic uh, emotional reaction that leads to either looting or violence or uh, judgment, just you know, th these real primal reactions, and I think we can take that energy and that that force behind there, and and make it something more focused. We could really have a movement that could push back against police violence and uh, police brutality. And um, I, have my, my personal hope is to get past the institution of the police itself uh, in the long run. But so that's that's kind of my feeling on the situation overall. Obviously, there's been a lot of violence. There's there was protests earlier today um, around the nation as well, just trying to keep the the momentum going. 
Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to lead to anything else. There seem, does seem to be some information coming out since the grand jury decision was released showing that certain certain actions that are typically taken with grand juries either weren't taken or actions that are not taken were taken. So there, there does seem to be some type of, um, you know, some type of controversy around the grand jury's proceedings and how they, they acted in this. So that's just going to fuel more anger for people who already think the decision was unjust. So I, I don't know. I don't think this is going to go away. And if it and if the name Mike Brown goes away after a couple of weeks or so, the anger isn't going to go away, and it's probably just going to take one more big. You know, we since Mike Brown's been killed, we've seen a number of people getting killed by cops. I mean, just just last week, I think there was like a dozen. The, the Free Thought Project was reporting something like. 12 people got killed since the grand jury decision by cops around the country. So it's only going to take one more situation like that that's really going to spark something larger again. And I think this is just the beginning of something we may see that in the coming years might be a, a much larger movement. Uh, Corey, I'll send it to you. What you... Okay. Um, I'm not really sure about the Mike Brown incident. Um, you want my opinion on this, or I mean, I don't have much as far as facts goes. Only what's being reported. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I, want to post it, then that's fine. I was going to give my opinion, so yeah, that's all that's right. Groovy. Well, my opinion on it is <laughs> um, that I believe, uh, based on on both sides of the argument that I've heard, and from the testimony that I've read in the transcripts, is that Mike Brown did attack the officer. Um, and what I got from it is that the officer shot him while the officer was still in the car. The sound ran. Then Mike Brown turned back around. The officer said to stop. And Mike Brown took a couple steps forward. The officer shot again. At that point, he was no longer a threat. The officer's in the wrong. Now Mike Brown charged him. Now he's attacking, and the officer shot him, killed him. Then the officer was in self-defense. So it's kind of both sides have a point there. But my main issue with this is the way that the prosecutor handled it. The prosecutor's job to a grand jury is to go in there and show evidence why the officer should be charged. That's not what the prosecutor did. The prosecutor went in there and showed all the evidence that they could possibly gather as to why the officer should not be charged. The prosecutor did exactly the opposite of what his job was. And that is why there is absolutely no chance that Wilson would have ever been indicted. And if it did go to trial, there is absolutely zero chance that he would have ever been convicted. The prosecutor went in there with the sole purpose to get him off. Hmm. All right. uh, John, do you have anything for this one? Um, not, not much that hasn't already been said. Like, <clears throat> uh, you know, like you said, I don't have many, uh, you know, the facts on who who was the aggressor, who did what. So I don't want to talk about I don't want to talk about that too much. But what I will say is that I've been really annoyed at how uh, the uh, the media has been portraying the absolute militarization of the police as a necessary thing because they show the rioters and the looters, and and they're saying, oh, this is necessary, and to a degree, it's it's working. Um, I gotta Derek have to go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, was there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, to a degree, it's working because uh, when when I'm in the break room at work, I mean, I, I work for a, a pretty large company, and there's a lot of people there, and, and people <laughs> talk, discuss what's going on, and it's mostly political work shit when they're not when they're not watching um, sports. So I ignore most of it. But a, the general consensus is a lot of people are saying, "Well, I'm glad that they they have the tanks and the MRAPs and the." M16s. I feel a lot safer about that because look at all those rioters and looters. And um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the fact is is that the rioting was not that big of a uh, an issue until the media started exploiting it. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm totally with you, John, on that one. Uh, yeah, Kika, what do you got? Well, I I posted a link in the the chat bar on the side there uh, to the official. Kika, your um, mic is having a hard time today. Still? God damn it. Yeah, there you go. That's funny. That better? Yeah. I'm going to 
And the, the website that it comes off of is uh, Canva. Keep it pushed up. <laughs> Keep your hand on it. There it goes again. Keep your hand on it. Try it again. Try it again. Hello? Yeah, yeah try that. You're kidding me. I have to hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the website that this comes from notes a lot of... <laughs> what? <laughs> I smoke way too much weed, guys. Oh my god! <laughs> oh lord! The, yeah, the it's, website, not, it's the, not working, man. It's not working nah, at all. No. Fuck it. Send it someone else. All right, Marcel. Marcel, what do you got? Um, my opi my opinion on the Ferguson case. I mean, like, um, I mean, like, I I know, like, you know, I got some some fl some like you know flack on it, like, um, and so like that, and. Uh, but uh, I mean, like, um, I, I I just don't really. Uh, I mean, as uh, at this point, I don't really, I don't really care what the uh, what the indictment is. I mean, like, it, it, I mean, the pet, the pet, the past is the past, and you know, I um, all all I really see now is just like, you know, um, as should be the should be the pinpoint is the. Uh, is police corruption and police brutality and the in the uh, in the militarization of the police force and so like that that I think that is a main issue that um, that we should be focusing on rather than than the actual fighting whether if the uh, whether if um, Darren Wilson was um, was a murderer or um, or or was it justified um, or something like that I don't really care about the about that right now but. But if but if you really want my if you want my analysis on it, I mean like I did see like some uh, some evidence supporting that uh, um, that all that although there is there is the uh, the testimony that says that uh, that Michael Brown actually did you know uh, attack the officer, but like um, but even if you look at the prosecutor. Um, the prosecutor has a bias towards, you know, cops and so like that. They, um, whenever, whenever there's like, you know, an, an indictment for cops and so stuff like that, um, they always, um, they, they always get not indict, indicted in Missouri. And, um, and, and there is like, you know, a, there is a lot of police corruption in, in, uh, um, in Ferguson, Missouri. I've, um, I've, you know. Researched on the on past uh, past uh, experiences um, on the on you know on it, but I uh, but as of this point, I don't really care. I can care less about it, but um, but I think that's just the main points is like you know police corruption, police brutality, and the militarization of the police forces that sh we should you know be discussing about rather than the uh, actual indictment. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Nikki, what do you say? Well, so when the shooting first happened back in August, um, I actually wrote a blog about it um, when it happened, like maybe the same day or the day, day after. Um, and at the time, the witness accounts were that um, Michael Brown was stopped for jaywalking and that he was shot in the back while he was fleeing. I've now read articles and heard different testimonies that that wasn't true. So, I mean, obviously, we don't really know what happened. We'll probably never know what happened. Um, but at least at the same time, this is also opening up a great conversation about the militarization of police and the misuse of force, um, the police's monopoly on force, and police brutality. It's bringing to light some of the other shootings and different things that's happened. So, unfortunately, most of the media attention is going to the looting, though my understanding is that the looter, looters and rioters um, were far outnumbered by the actual peaceful protesters that were, like, lining the streets and trying to confront the police. Um, and I also think what's interesting is... Um, I saw a video on YouTube recently of a police officer. I believe he was a captain. Uh, I think he was a captain in Pennsylvania or something. But he quit his job, and he went down to Ferguson and wore his uniform and joined the protesters, and he was speaking out about the police force as a corrupt system 
that is oppressing people, whether they're black, white, yellow, red, it doesn't matter. Um, he did say that it was the fault of the corporations and the 1%, so he sort of lost it a little bit along the way. Um, but I thought it was really great that there was an actual police officer out there that was saying, this system is wrong, this monopoly on force is wrong. What's interesting is I posted that video to my page, actually, and um, I actually lost a lot of people that day because I was told that um, even though the police are militarized now, they are still there for our own good, and that I should, should support the police because the police support gun rights. Um, wow. Which uh, really has nothing to do with each other, um, and I don't know where this these people were from, because police in Massachusetts definitely do not support gun rights at all. <laughs> but I don't, I don't really see how one has to necessarily include the other. But I think it's starting a great conversation nationally about police militarization and their monopoly on force. Right. Um, Michael, I'm going to send it to you, but uh, your mic is off. Um, and that might have been my fault. Damn that Walmart militarizing our police. There you go. How's that? <laughs> okay. Um, well, time to be edgy again. I would agree. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Oh, we have a few. We have half of us are in New England, by the way. But I think that I agree with Marcel more than anybody else. I don't give a fuck. Um, I think that this is the same thing as Occupy. Like, everybody involved is... is violent and stupid and I don't want to interact with a single one of them. I don't even want to have to goddamn think about it. We're talking about a cop murdered a kid who stole a cigarette. So both of those are bad. The cop murdering the kid's probably worse, but aside from that, we have people destroying private property and protesting. And I don't like protesting. It's annoying and pointless in my opinion and it just fucking rubs me the wrong way. So well, you mean rioting, right? Like no, I, I mean protesting. I mean <laughs> oh, people like in the streets right. holding signs. I think that's not only a waste of your time. It's begging, and it's that's just, just annoying to me. It's like a pet peeve I have, I guess. Um, and they usually say like capitalism is evil and just all this crazy stuff that doesn't even make sense. So I'm just not down. Um, the whole thing in Ferguson is a mess, and ev I think basically every single person involved is wrong. You know, that's that's all I got. Go ahead. Right. I don't care. I'm 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 sad that the kid died. Like I don't like people's windows getting smashed, but this kid got murdered by a cop in the middle of the street. People should probably be smashing stuff. And I just think it's a madhouse on, on all sides. I don't think I think there's no good guy. This is World War Two, man. There's yeah perspectives yeah. about who's right, but I don't think anybody is. I think I think it'd be okay if they were smashing police windows and not like store windows. Well, in my opinion, <laughs> they would. If, if Do you, you know, know what the, I if, I said that to my mom the other day. She called me and was concerned that I was caught in like a Boston riot <laughs> or something, because um, she does those things. And I was like, oh well, you know, it sucks and they shouldn't be looting people's private property. But you know, I heard that they set a city hall on fire. And <laughs> police windows. That's awesome. And she said to me, no, that's wrong, because people have legal documents there, and uh, legal documents need to be protected. They're screwing us all. That is what she told me. Oh, my God. Well, I think that if you know what the word public means, then you must understand that town hall is yours. So I think yeah. that you can destroy your own property. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I said that on my newsfeed. I got I took some shit for that. I said burn government buildings, not liquor stores, and people were like, No, don't burn anything. It's not right. <laughs> what's gonna, what's gonna piss you off to the point where you're gonna where you're gonna do this? <laughs> no, 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 just stick your head in the sand. All right. <laughs> the sand is nice though, it is comfy. So um <laughs> speaking of public things and uh begging, um <laughs> we'll talk about this uh, Swiss gold vote. Um, so basically the idea was uh, Switzerland was going to try to back, well, you know, the public was going to vote on whether or not 
the SNB or the Swiss National Bank should back their currency with gold. And um, currently, it's backed by euros. So fiat is being backed by fiat. So that's wonderful. Um, that's currently. And um, uh, the vote was yesterday. And the vote didn't pass, of course. I mean, either, you know, people are stupid or... <laughs> Um, or they were told to <laughs> vote one way, or the vote was rigged, or all of that. You know, it could have been all of it. So it doesn't matter. You know, the state is controlling you. I mean, we all know this stuff. So obviously the, the, uh, uh, the Swiss uh, franc is not being backed by gold. Um, so that, that is my take on it. Um, I, I was hopeful that maybe... Oh no! Whim of a chance, it would have actually passed. Um, of course, of course not. You know, it's the freaking state. So, I hope so. <laughs> can I just go first? Because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be really fast if I can go first. Please, please. <laughs> oh God! If you think that you're gonna achieve freedom through the government, you're insane. Precisely. Go ahead. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> now, Nikki, what do you say? Oh, goodness. Um, well, I say fiat backed by fiat. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> awesome idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know if the Swiss know much about economics, but if there are anything like Americans, I, people tell me all the time how the gold standard is stupid and how the Federal Reserve is awesome, and they clearly don't know anything about either of those things. <laughs> but they talk about how poor everyone was when we had the gold standard, and I don't really know what exactly they're reading or what made them think that. But So if that's a sampling of you know general humanity and how they view economics, then maybe they really did all vote no. <laughs> well, I might interject about that. Uh, the gold standard in the United States uh, lasted until the 1940s or something, from 1913 to the 40s or somewhere Nick, in there. Nick, um, Nick. Uh, no, no, uh, because... Oh, no, yeah, well, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I mean, yes, technically, but the, the thing is, uh, he got us off of Bretton Woods, which... Um, was a really bad idea where we were the only country in the world with a gold standard. So other countries did have a gold standard, or some of them. Um, and in any case, uh, before 1913, for the most part, we did use gold and silver in our pockets or as a certificate and all that other stuff. But anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, Corey, what do you say? Um... I'm with Liberty Doll on this. I think it's a great idea. I mean, if if uh, if the Swiss dollar fails, you print more Swiss dollars, and if that doesn't work, you print more euros. Probably <laughs> <laughs> go wrong. It's <laughs> uh, genius. But really, though, um, I, I, I believe they probably did vote no on it because. Um, I've heard this as well from many people, how everybody was poor when we had the gold standard and the Federal Reserve fixed everything. And uh, These people who say those kinds of things, uh, they've never read history in any meaningful way. I mean, maybe, you know, they've taken high school history classes and now they think they know the entire history of the United States. <laughs> like me with <laughs> economics. We were the most prosperous country in the world under the gold standard. What happened is when the Federal Reserve was created under Wilson, um, they ended the gold standard, although people still kept gold and money could still be exchanged for gold, but it wasn't really gold that was backing it. And the gold was later confiscated under what FDR confiscated all the gold, I think it was. Yeah, it was FDR. Yep. Yeah, and, and it was the establishment <laughs> of the Federal Reserve is what started the Great Depression, where everybody's bank accounts crashed. That's when everybody went poor. We started to pull out of that, you know, World War One and World War Two. Then the gold was all confiscated. So it was, it was the Federal Reserve that crashed the economy, not the gold standard. We were prosperous under that. It was the war economy which propped the economy back up. 
and then the gold was confiscated. Those people who say that, they have never read history. They're morons. I also want to add real quick, um, yeah, no. I, I read an article earlier about the vote, um, and it said <laughs> that the, the government was also putting out these ad campaigns saying that if people voted yes, um, Towards the gold standard and this law, that it would actually like crash a bunch of worlds. <laughs> so that could have been a big part of it too. I I read that on an article earlier. Actually, I'd have to say that's probably half true at least, because <laughs> um, Japan has been, um, you could almost say hyperinflating its currency over the last uh, year, but not hyperinflating. It's just it, they've been excessive in trying to prop up the United States dollar. And, you know, it's basically a currency war against Asia for the most part right now. Uh, China and Russia and India are all buying gold, like ginormous amounts of gold. Um, so they would stay stable uh, and Switzerland potentially while the euro crashes, the dollar crashes. That's my guess at least. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, John, what do you say? Oh, about the um, the gold standard. No, you guys. <laughs> yeah, all this thing that we've been talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, no, there's uh, not uh, there's not much to add. You guys pretty much got it all. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's nothing to add to that. Can Can I interject a little question really quick? I. Yeah. And this is one that I can't really get my head around, except for the fact that uh, I've been told it by people who are economically more intelligent than I am, or informed than I am. Um, why is fiat currency bad if it's decentralized? If it's not centralized, if there's not a regulatory force controlling the free flow of the market or whatever, why why is that a bad thing? It's it's actually uh, a contradiction in terms. Fiat mm -hmm. currency means legislated by, by the government. Yeah, by decree. Oh, I thought fiat currency meant that it's not physically backed. No, no. Um, no, we have just by government decree. From 1913 on. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so, fine. So, what? Okay, yeah, then I don't like fiat currency. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, th let me change my question. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> let, me, let me change my question just a little bit. Take um, it easy on the bong hits, Mike. Come on. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. So, what's wrong with a currency that's not physically backed? You want something that is limited, while basically fiat paper can be printed forever. Bitcoin, it's yeah. limited, right? Uh, Why is Bitcoin, Bitcoin limited and not paper? Uh, Bitcoin is limited by the uh, by the algorithm. I know it's blockchain like, technology. Yeah. Like I know, I know, but who's no. to say that I'm not a master hacker and I just get in there somehow and I make seventy more bitcoins, right? Uh, does it work like that? I don't think. I have no idea. I really don't think so. I don't know. I don't hack. I can't even get on YouTube, man. I don't know. <laughs> You're on it right now. <laughs> but 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 why? Exactly why is is it is it bad to have a currency that's not physically backed? I can't I can't come up with it. Well, yeah, go ahead. Well, I have a, I have a, I have an idea. Yep. But it, it's a lot easier to to uh, pinpoint the value of, uh, of currency rather than allowing inflation to take hold of currency, kind of like we have right now with fiat currency. Um, Wait, because inflation doesn't happen with gold and silver? Come on. Well, exactly. No, it's it, it's, it's it artificial inflation, less. but it's, it still happens. Of course it does. Right, Why right. do you think the price fluctuates? And, and, well, and the same argument about Bitcoin to silver and gold applies because there's only a finite amount and there will never be more or less, right? Well, the reason that gold and silver fluctuate is the Federal Reserve of banking system manipulating the supply of money. Sure, they, yeah, I agree. I know, yeah. They print more money, then it will take a lesser amount of gold to equal the amount that that money is worth. If they print less money or if they you know, stop the flow of the money printing, then it will take more uh, gold to equal the amount of one dollar. So then the price of gold goes down. So it's if if there was not this uh, banking system, this fractional reserve banking system printing 
all this money, and if it was simply gold and silver that was being used as money, it would not inflate. The, the uh, sure, I, 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 under, I understand central banking, and I understand inflation and deflation. I got you, but the thing is, is it does exist, and it happens, and, and, and that was my point, is artificial inflation. Um, and that's exactly what we're talking about if we're talking about a hard currency like gold or silver or something that's physically represented. So, right. so any currency or money is, um, if it's decentralized, it's going to fluctuate in value the way um, based on supply and based on demand. Sure. Um, I don't remember if it was Hazlitt or Rothbard, um, but they talked about the point that a money, all something has to be to be a money is just something that can be parceled out that people find value. Yeah, in. that's Rothbard. It's uh, Anatomy of the State. Okay. I, um, I mean. <laughs> and and I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> I, like... Uh, <laughs> But if I might, if I might, like it, yeah. it's a store of value. Basically, the dollar doesn't store value. That's right. the point. Um, over the long term, I mean, it stores value for just a few months, and then it starts deteriorating. You know what I mean? What well, because of the inflation, and you you get that, I think. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But it's the store of value. You know, there's like five properties to money, and everything is a currency. Anything can be a currency. But gold, silver, Bitcoin, they have the tangible um, uh, the way to hold. No, it stores a value. Right, and that's you why have, I have a problem with Bitcoin. Yeah, I was going to say, do you have a tangible Bitcoin? I don't. I, I have a problem with Bitcoin, right, for that reason. But that's it. I mean, Bitcoin is great because it's decentralized. It's not created by the government. Um, it is a different way to, um, you know, uh, have that free market attitude toward money, but it's, you know, basically <laughs> silver, gold, platinum, copper, zinc, iron, any bullets. of that. Bullets, marijuana. Good. No, not even bullets unless it's made of iron. I'm talking about elemental metal. Oh, you know? okay, okay. Hard metals, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd so, say that lead is probably hard metal. <laughs> that's true, lead. Yeah, my bad. Lead is an element. Yeah. If I punch it, it's not going to be soft, that's for sure. Well, there's a lot of it. depends if it's hollow point or not, really. Oh, here, here uh, we go. <laughs> a lot of bullets these days are being made out purely out of copper, and copper also has historically been used as a currency just as long as gold and silver. Um, you know, a lot of poor people, you know, didn't have gold and silver back in, you know, the medieval times or whatever. They had copper, you know, copper pennies that would trade for bread. So they very rarely ever had silver or gold. Mm. I prefer to trade in cannabis myself. But. Hash coins, man. <laughs> <laughs> Get it done. Get on it. That's I don't need, I don't do technology so much. So it's a good currency. You know, it's not. It's not an actual money though. It doesn't store the value. Like you why? Can, why is it not a money? Um, because you use it. it it's consumable. Like oh, for right. okay. You know what I'm saying? Like gold. Um, you can use it in computers or whatever, but you can always ba uh, extract it back up. Its only uh, its only purpose is to represent a subjective value. Uh, uh, a more no. subjective value. No, it's not its only purpose. That's not the. That's not what I'm saying. Well, um, that was your argument against weed, no? No, because you use it. It's gone. It's, it, bye. See ya. Exactly. So the your money in in your terms, um, the difference there would be the fact that it its only purpose, the only reason this thing exists, is to represent what amounts of value that you want it to. You're not going to eat it. You're not going to drink it. You're not going to no, shoot it out of a gun. No, that's not what I'm saying. Lead could be used as a money. You're right. Lead is lead would be an elemental metal. It you could um it's not um uh it's not rare though, I guess is the problem with lead. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um like gold, silver, platinum, palladium, those are rare. Um but though gold does have a different purpose, silver does have a different purpose. It's not yeah. its own purpose, you know what I'm saying? Well, Another thing, um, copper is not rare at all either, but that's why historically copper has been used to represent, you know, small denominations of currency, pennies. Yeah. Pennies are copper. Yeah. Pennies always have been copper. Yeah. But, you know, nickels, dimes, and up, 
have been silver, you know, dollars. When you get into like the twenty, fifty, hundred dollar marks, historically those have been made of gold. Yeah. And it's based on the rarity of the metal. And the reason that copper is used and not lead is lead is so soft, you know, it can be bent, broken, whatever. You can break it with your fingers if you had a lead penny. Well, so Corey, so why do you know so much about metal? Uh, I don't know, man. He's a cyborg. Terrorism. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I got gotcha. you. Since we're in the middle of this, I'll uh, do the prices real quick. Um, Perfect so, uh, silver, uh, the last time we did this show was actually uh, November 17th, uh, we, so it's been two weeks. Uh, we did, uh, uh, so that was at 8.43, I took the prices tonight, uh, December 1st. Silver was 16.05, six, uh, it's 16.43 tonight, went up 30, 38 cents over the last two weeks, it's 2.4%. Gold went from 11.8380 to 12.0801. That's a 24, uh, 24 cent change. That's two percent. Uh, Bitcoin went from 3.8751 to 3.7886. That's a drop of eight dollars sixty five cents, two point two percent. And actually, I want to also mention that um, today it went up. Uh, or silver went up a uh, dollar fifty ish, uh, gold went up about uh, fifty dollars, something like that, nice. uh, in one day. So, yeah, that's a little crazy. Uh, but you know, the markets are very volatile right now. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more than that because you know, my predictions are constantly wrong over the last. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a bad couple months for me. <laughs> anyway. Well, I think after I watched Bitcoin drop $1,300, I'm not overly concerned with 7 bucks. No, so, no, of course not. You know, I don't really – I hardly do silver. Uh, I've never really done gold or platinum or copper or anything. Um but if anybody here is going to talk about silver, John is actually probably your guy. Yeah, I, I started buying silver, um, I would you say, a couple of months ago, maybe. Uh, uh, actually, almost a year ago. No, it hasn't been. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. no. Cause, Park Fest no, cause, was like nine months ago, dude. Was it nine months ago? Are you kidding? Maybe no. eight. No. Pork Fest really count. Dude. Dude. Count. Dude. count. All right, I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have lied to me and just like took my bro. <laughs> Wasted. No, uh, not even. I wish. <laughs> so, uh, so, so six months ago at uh, Pork Fest, I bought my first silver. It was from the uh, Sons of Liberty Mint. Uh, they're the cop lot guys, and it was uh, four of the quarter ounce pieces. So all together is one ounce. And uh, I, don't, I thought it was cool. It was. Um, I'd never dealt with uh, precious metals, gold or silver or anything. I thought it was really cool. So when I got home, I, I started, you know, reading and learning a little bit more about it. And uh, every week I've been buying some Bitcoin, like, you know, 10 or 20 bucks worth of, worth of Bitcoin. I let it build up a little bit, and then I purchased some silver online, and, and it's been pretty cool. I've got a, about $150 worth of silver right now. Very cool. Most of most of it's junk metal, like, you know, uh, dimes and quarters, half dollars from 1964 and before. But um, there's a couple of uh, a couple of nice pieces. I just got a, a one-ounce coin that says end the Fed on it. End the Fed, this is fraudulent reserve system. So I thought it was cool. I had to have it. But, uh, yeah, no, silver silver's cool. I, I like <laughs> We've actually been buying silver for two or three years now. Um, we usually use um, Acmex um, and a couple other, like Scottsdale Silver uh, and a couple other companies. Um, we started out getting coins off eBay, um, like John said, old like junk quarters and dimes. Um, but we also have, uh, we actually happened upon some collections at like tag sales and flea markets and stuff like that that we got some good deals on. I don't know how many ounces we have right now, but it's like a lot. 
Uh, but unfortunately, some of it too we got last year when it was um, maybe like twenty-two dollars, and I know it went up to forty something at one point, which was super exciting. But um, it's been steadily declining since then. But we even get them and like give them out as Christmas presents, the little one-ounce coins and stuff like that. Um, I have a couple friends that always give them out on people's birthdays, so we have a pretty significant amount. They look pretty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, JB over here says uh, every single time I talk to him, he says that gold is going. I'm sorry, silver is going up, no matter what's actually happening. So <laughs> well, maybe he, you should talk to him a little more. Often. Historically, <laughs> it always has, as far as I know, but it fluctuates a lot. I think it's usually higher in the summer, and then it goes down the rest of the month, something like that. I don't know. Pat knows more about it than I do. Yeah, you guys should just tra you guys should just trade in magic cards. I think, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't even know enough about silver to to make a, a legitimate claim. So, hey Josh, um, yeah. what, what exactly is the price of silver right now? Uh, so yeah, sixteen forty three is the last time I took it at eight forty three. Okay, um, because I, I was just looking up this end the Fed silver coin that um Amagi was talking about. Yeah, they've got yeah. here. On this website, a one ounce in the Fed silver coin, but they're they're charging eighteen eighty four for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's typical. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's, they're that's they're gonna good. they're gonna make yeah, they're gonna make money. On. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really yeah. gonna run a company if I'm not making money. The like, best, oh, of course. I get it. The best I think we've ever found was just like a dollar over spot. Um, but that's if you buy in bulk, like a hundred ounces at a time or something like that. Yeah, you're gonna it, buy a lot. John, John, what would be the running value of uh, I don't know, one of the quarters from Amagi Metals? What do you mean, one of the quarters? Which one? How much I know? Uh, how much are you gonna actually pay for it above market silver value? For for what now specifically? I don't know, like a quarter or. Yeah, a quarter. They, yeah. they don't sell the coin singly. You, you get when you get junk silver, um, they sell it to you by face value amount, like either one dollar, ten dollar, yeah. hundred dollar. Right. So, so um, yeah, I've been buying from Amagi Metals, and and it, it fluctuates between like thirteen fifty and fourteen fifty or fifteen dollars or so. It fluctuates like the price of silver does. Yeah, but that's the website that I'm on right now. Um, and it's 1884 if you pay with Bitcoin check or bank wire, I guess directly out of your checking. Mm -hmm. If you pay with a credit card, uh, they're charging 19. Yeah, I use Bitcoin every time because, well, because Bitcoin. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> because it feels. Because it feels good. Because it feels. Good. <laughs> I use Bitcoin. I use Bitcoin because of the feel. <laughs> I've been. Uh, I've been buying from JM Bullion. Uh, yeah. I buy in bulk, like a uh, hundred ounces at a time. Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I just want to get it over with. I, I don't want cash. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want cash. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, uh, <laughs> hundred ounces. Better be saying that ever. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad joke. <laughs> no, it was a great. It was a great joke. <laughs> I love I love bad jokes. <laughs> so um, um, yeah, I guess uh, I think we gotta wrap this up, guys. Um, we didn't hit all of our topics, but uh, I definitely appreciate you all coming on. Um, let's I'm try to let's try to give uh give everybody one minute on Hunger Games. Uh, I don't think we have the time. We're past our time. So oh, yeah, we really, that. really are, huh? Yeah, I um, I just want to ask everyone to wave to the camera. Uh, hi. I'm waving. Yeah. Hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. Thanks everybody. Uh, yeah, and uh, so watch our show. It'll be uh on the air Wednesday at 3 p.m. Um, and I swear all the graphics will be up and um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and say hi to Marcel, everybody, you know, he's going like this. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, and our next show will be live uh, Monday the 10th, and uh, Michael, who do we have on that day? We have the activist extraordinaire and somebody who faced, 
I think at the end end result was a hundred years in prison by the terrorist task force of New Hampshire. Well, federal, but in New Hampshire, uh, for 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 a flower, um, Rich Paul, out of out of Keene. Oh wow! Actually. Yep. That's gonna be a great show, right there. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a bad dude. Yeah. Man. yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon.